We've done shadows of vertical lines, horizontal lines, and inclines on horizontal surfaces. So now let's do shadows of curved lines on horizontal surfaces using the parallel light system. So drawing shadows of curved lines is a lot like drawing curved lines. You find points along the curve and you connect them. When we do ellipses, four point, eight point ellipse, 12 point ellipse, you are just finding points along that curve and you're connecting all the dots. So if we had a line you know, like this, and let's just make a, like a roller coaster here, and you're doing a shadow of this, let's give it some thickness so it looks like something. So you have this, this, I don't know, this wall that has this curved, curvy wall. You want to plot a shadow of this. What you do is just drop, you drop flagpoles down from strategic points. I'm just doing it from the very top and from the very lowest points. And from each of those, you draw a ground line. And from the top of the flagpoles, you do a light angle. And then you get these points. And then you connect them. And you get a shadow. If I would have drawn more flagpoles through here, I would get more points and then uh, potentially a more accurate shadow of this wall. So I know how often you're going to like be drawing something like that. So let's draw something, um, some an object. Let's do a cylinder shape because there's lots of cylindrical things out there. So I was through the cylinder. And so first thing you might want to do is Take a ground line and just move it up till it touches the cylinder. And from the back side, bring it down so it touches the cylinder. And that's the, the width of the shadow. Right where it touches the shadow, that is where we would call the core shadow would be there. But we don't do like core shadows when plotting perspective shadows. It is just a, a line. It's either things are either in light or they're in shadow. And we don't do that little subtle transition thing. You, you do in your artwork, but when you're plotting out shadows in perspective, they are everything is very crisp lines. So to get the curve, the, the, the shadow of this top of this cylinder shape down here, I mean, there, there's a few ways to do it. I mean, the long way to do it would be to drop flagpoles down from points along this curve and then do ground lines and then do light angles and you'll get points out here you know, like that and you connect them and you'll get the curve. But for something like this, in this situation, since it's parallel light and, um, and I used ellipse guide ellipses on this, so the easy, quicker way to do something like this is fine. Here I put the center of this cylinder down on the ground and the center of it on the top. So this would be like a flagpole right here that goes from the tip of the cylinder down to the bottom of the cylinder. And from that, if we do a, light, a ground line from this, and then we do a light angle from the top of this flagpole, and you get the shadow of the center of this ellipse. So this was a, a 35 degree ellipse. This was um, a 25 degree ellipse. So the shadow on the ground is going to be the same degree of an ellipse that this one is. We put this right in the middle. This is the minor axis of this. This is a horizontal ellipse, so the minor axis is just straight up and down. 
and here is your shadow. You could do the whole shadow like that, and then this would be the shadow of this circle. These two are going to be the same ellipse degrees. Ellipses, when you draw them horizontally, like they're all going to be the same if they're lined up horizontally. If this is a 35 degree ellipse, this is going to be a 35 degree ellipse. If I have a small ellipse down in here, this is going to be a 35 degree ellipse. It's just as they get closer to the horizon line, they get skinnier, but they're still going to be the same horizontally. Down here, they get rounder. They'll still be the same degree. If you have one like over here, it's going to be the same degree as this one. So, but this is, this is an ellipse guide ellipse. So if you're doing perspective ellipses, then it's a little different. These are exactly the same. In perspective, these two ellipses would not, not really be the same. I did jump ahead, just save some time. I did this one, it's a little sketchy, but I plotted out a circle and then made a perspective ellipse. It has, it's, I pushed it out to the edge here just to make it a little more obvious what's going on with like, like it's, it's outside the cone of vision. And this is what happens, you know, you get this distortion. It looks like, like the marble test. If you put a marble onto this, this surface, it looks like it would roll off the side because it looks like it's going downhill. So these two are the same degrees. Like I just made the exact same square over here and did a perspective ellipse on this side. So in perspective, this is how it would look. I don't know, I kind of like the way the other one looks better because this looks like it's, it's, gonna, it's falling down and this looks like it's falling down. It doesn't look like it's flat, but this is what a perspective ellipse would look like. The shadow of the cylinder on the ground this has a very steep light angle. The light angle's coming like this, like right from the center. And here is a flagpole going right down the middle. Here's where the um, core shadow would be, right there. Look at what, what the difference is here too. See, this is right in the middle. And then this is the core shadow on the other side of the ellipse. And you can see really clearly the flagpole that goes right down the middle of this. But this one, you know, they're like all lined up with each other because this doesn't have perspective to it. Okay, this is uh, cylinders, maybe spheres next.